Oh! Father, <coughs> what are you doing? Gold crushers. <laughs> ah! What is up? It's your boy John and Shree Vive, BB Pro, Mr. Tell like it is. No, I didn't actually smash my head on the damn squat rack. But today we are gonna talk about the Skull Crushers in an episode of Coaching Up, featuring your boy, Jesse James, and more place, more dates. I'm gonna show you guys how to actually do proper Skull Crushers. So without further ado, guys, keep your eyes glued to the screen and your ears glued to the speakers. Let's learn some boom. Guns are out. Yeah. Oh, let's go. How big were your delts in that one photo? I never measured them. <laughs> how do you measure them? Yeah. Are mine close? They gotta be somewhat close. <laughs> no one's All right. So a couple of things I'm seeing here. We gotta we gotta fix this ASAP because we got both of them are doing some similar things from the wrists all the way to the shoulders, and we're gonna fix that right now. So I see this happen all the time, and when it comes to cold crushes, I don't really do them anymore. So number one uh, reason why I don't do them that much is because. Prior, I've had some elbow issues. So, um, are they for people who have elbow issues? No, but you can change a couple of things within your technique to avoid making the elbow worse. And there's some things you can do to make sure you'd avoid having elbow pain to begin with. Now, setting things up, number one, we're gonna talk about how to hold the bar, where to hold the bar, and how to position yourself, and then where are we gonna break at the elbow to make just actually a optimal tricep blasting, pumping, horseshoe making, Workout, of course you make it. Remember, for more, more triceps, we gotta make sure we do something weird Boom. with our fit with our wrist. Here I have my trusty, it's called actually, it's called a super easy bar because there's way more easy parts to the bar. Easier on your wrists. So a couple things, where we grab this bar. Now you're, where have you grabbed the bar? Now I know this is a little fancy, it's got more than one, but like for the most part you have, most people have the close grip and then most people have this one. That's why it's so cool about this. You're like, woo, and it's like back in the middle and then again, and then again, right? Super cool, right? So it's fine to do grip here, and it's fine to do a grip here. What's gonna make a difference is your shoulder mobility, how healthy your shoulders are. So if you don't have that good mobility, you know, being in this position here, you're probably gonna to wanna to be out a little further. Or let's just say you have smaller clavicles. You're a smaller person, right? You're not as wide, then you probably grabbing inside here would make some sense. And if you're like a super wide guy, like myself. Either way, for the wide people, maybe using an outside grip makes more sense as well too than the super wide people, there you go. What the most important part of this is how we position ourselves on the bench, where we break at the elbow, and then what, have, what are our wrists doing in, this, in, in the whole grand scheme of things, right? So here's what we see from our boy Derek and Jesse. Both of them, now, the reason why I'm correcting this is because, you know, like a lot of you guys are gonna follow Jesse and Derek. They have great channels, unbelievable channels, and they are very influential people. But influential people make people do influential things. So they'll copy the influence. So it's like, if I wanna be like Derek or Jesse, I gotta do skull crushes like they do. So what happens is, what Derek and Jesse both are doing, they have their grip outside, and then we have the old flimsy wrist. We got this thing where it's like, and then, you know, we're set up here, and then we're back, and then the wrists kind of do this weird thing here, then they come up, and then, the, then, the, then it finishes here. This happens, this happens a lot. We have the wrists here at the start. It's like, bam, I look good. And then as soon as they start tipping backwards, the wrist goes, yoinks. It's like, huh? And then it goes all the way back and you got all this pressure on your wrist. Then we got this weird thing here. And then it comes up to here. And then the, the movement stops when the wrists straighten up. And it's something that is done not intentionally. That is a non-intentional thing that they're doing. That is something they're doing out of habit. They don't have someone like myself over them being like, straighten your damn wrists up. Most of you guys are getting enough greens in your daily diet. I don't mean these greens. I mean these greens. Blue Star Nutraceuticals Refuge. Just a quick and easy way to get your daily essential vitamins, minerals, and fiber. And on top of that, it tastes amazing. So guys, hit the description below. And use my code Jotty for your next order of Refuge now. Keep your wrists straight, firm. Remember, I'm gonna give that same cue like I always do. Firm wrists, straight, strong, bam, like this. Right, keep it this way. So we have a good line of strength and stability right from here all the way through. Think of like your ankles as your wrists. If your ankles are wobbly when you're trying to do things, think about how wobbly you're gonna be if you're walking. Say you're squatting or anything that involves being on your feet and you got ankles that are just wobbling all around. You see those cute, cute one of them girls wearing their heels, they're wobbling around. Like, that's, what you, that's what your wrists look like when you do this, all right? 
So what we want to do is, very quick, position yourself here, grab the weight, and we're making a fist. The fists are pointed at the ceiling, like you want to punch the ceiling. Now, when it comes to elbow, now this is what most people do, and it's fine. First, we have the travel the arms back and through and then pushing up, which is fine. But for some people who might have elbow issues, that might be where you find the most pain, is when your elbows travel back and then you have this like pain that's sitting lingering right in that elbow joint. And then you're like, ah, and that was literally me about a year ago. So a couple cues you can do, instead of just breaking from here and sitting back, and that's fine if you have no pain that way, that's completely fine. But think about letting your elbows break first and then going back and then up. Right? It's like a squats. Think about your knees and your hips basically breaking. See how it goes, and then we go back. We don't wanna, we don't have to. You can if you want. Again, if you don't have issues in your elbow, you can go back and go from here and go up. But if you have elbow issues, let those elbows break first down there and then coming up. Another cue as well too, is where do we move this thing? Where, where, is, it, where is it best to go to? Again, it's gonna come to the individual who has either healthy shoulders, or not healthy shoulders. When I mean healthy shoulders, I mean like a shoulder that can run through its full range of motion without any kind of issues. My shoulders are not healthy. They're not, they're banged up. But for those who have healthy shoulders, you're completely fine to go here and then come up. If you have a little bit of issues in your elbows and shoulders, we can just break from here right to the top of the head, traditional skull crusher and up. There's nothing wrong with this at all. The biggest issue most people have, or the most trying part of this, will be making sure the elbows don't flare out. So regardless, regardless of where we decide to break our elbows, whether we're going from here and pushing back and then up here, or letting the elbows break from here, going to the skull, or we're doing right to the nose like this, the hardest part for most people is making sure the elbows don't do this, because this happens all the time. You have this weird thing like this, and then you're just kind of jiving this way. We want to make sure their elbows stay right in front of us. So it tracks back. So while I'm holding this bar, it's almost like I'm trying to bend the bar. Now, if you see, I can't bend this bar, but when I create the action of bending the bar, my arms, my elbows naturally go in front. Look at that. Boom, there you go. My elbows go from here. So for those of you guys who are like, man, that might be me actually. Let's make sure we start here. Elbows are in front and then we can track down the way that's best for you, whether it's here and up with straight wrists, or it's right to the skull and up, or it's right down to the chin and up. Both, all three have its benefits, and all three have their drawbacks, depending on who you are. But for the main part, for this, and we'll go from floor to core, I've placed myself down, feet underneath my body, like as if I can just get up from a squat, and they're gonna stay this way. Then if I have a partner, great. If I don't have a partner, I'm gonna use a rack. And if I just have myself, I might have to do a little, be a little fancy and kind of do one of these kind of things. Here I push up this way. Now again, we're not driving, we're not grabbing a bunch of weight. You wanna grab a weight that you can do between 10 to 20-ish reps. I'm talking like at least 10 and then like 20 reps. So that means you're not gonna be grabbing weight that you're struggling, you're like, Argh! this isn't one of those compound powerlifting, strength gaining movements. This is a, I'm trying to blow the heck out of my tricep movements. That's all it is. So we're gonna grab a weight. Feet are planted just like you're doing a flat bench, right? Core engaged, shoulders back and away from the ears, like I'm at the top of a press, so pretend I'm at the top of a, of a close grip press. Then I'm gonna track my elbows up. Now I'm gonna start strong wrist, wrist, fists, wrists and elbows are locked in place. I'm gonna try and bend that bar to make sure the elbows are in front. And then I'm either gonna go to the back, down to the bench, and press up to here, or I'm gonna let the elbows break first down to, sh down to the forehead, and then up, or I can go from here to the chin and up. All three, I'm gonna make sure that my elbows are not flaring out. That is the biggest part of this, that causes a lot of issues, impingements in the elbows, and the shoulders, and everything. And it's gonna start from how you hold this thing. Again, here, bend the bar right to the bench, and up, letting the elbows track back first, or right to our forehead, and let the elbows go bend, letting the elbows bend forward first, and up, or we're here to the chin, and up. And as you can see, each rep I do, you can see that I'm actively making sure that my elbows are pressing in. I want them straight forward this entire time. Now, 
I have literally done zero weight and my triceps are on fire just demonstrating the movement by being in position. So a lot of times your success is gonna come from just being in proper positioning and having good body posture and your set will actually end up being better than you thought just from the way you set it up. So take the time to set it up. Use these cues next time you do skull crushers and let me know how it goes in the comment section below. Any hey guys, for more videos guys, check these out here for more instructional videos and grab my ebook and you guys know what it is, Iron Shepherd's Iron, progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep dream chasing, peace.